Hello and welcome to a 10-channel workflow presentation. I'm Lee Veris, your host for this exploration of a modern image enhancement workflow in Photoshop. The 10-channel workflow is a new approach to photographic image enhancement pioneered by Dan Margulis. The main features of this approach start with the idea that one can control tone and contrast by blending the grayscale channels back into the color image. You can take advantage of the unique properties of the 10 possible channels of RGB, LAB, and CMYK to shape tone and contrast. Enhance the color saturation of an image by using the LAB color space to create a higher quality result. Use the raw processing engine of ACR or Lightroom primarily to set up for more aggressive moves in Photoshop. And finally, to maintain flexible, uh, maximum flexibility for editing changes that might be necessary in a collaborative production environment. Our project for this particular exploration is a photograph taken in Venice, Italy during the week before Carnival in February 2015. We will now look at how we will go from the straight out of camera shot to basic raw enhancements in Lightroom. And finally, the Photoshop fine tuning using the 10 channel workflow. We'll start in Lightroom. Okay, so here in Lightroom, uh, I'm examining this image that we're going to be working with, and I can see that uh, it's moderately underexposed because the camera has tried to compensate for the bright sky. And I'd like to try to get as detail everywhere. Uh, I want to have tones with some detail in it everywhere in the image, and I don't need to emphasize contrast so much as, as just detail. So I'm going to start by bringing the highlights down, and I, I see that there's some information here. I'll go ahead and bring them all the way down. I can, I can see uh, that we have some sky to work with, but now it really does seem like it's just way too... Uh, underexposed and sort of shadowy, and that's in the shadow area. So we'll, we'll use the shadow slider. And uh, I'll go ahead and like bring this all the way up. Um, but I would, I'd still like to get a little more richness in the sky. And so I'm going to use the exposure slider just to bring the whole thing down just a little bit now that I've brought the shadows way up. And what I've got going on now is, is fairly flat. Uh, rendering, uh, but there's plenty of tones in the sky. I'm looking at, at maximizing this this area here, the, the difference between this highlight in the clouds and the tone of the of the blue sky. And that's why I use the you know the exposure slider just a little bit. Uh, but we'll we'll back out again so I can see the whole image in context. And I see it's it's sort of you know it's still a little bit on the downside, uh, but the, the, there's two deep areas of shadow that really uh, uh, trouble me. I, I'd like to see more detail in these figures, and I'd like to see some more detail in uh, the side of the wall here. So I usually try to avoid doing these kinds of local adjustments, but in this case, I'm going to give uh, I'm going to give Photoshop a little leg up on these areas by brightening it up in uh, Lightroom. And I'll go ahead and use the local adjustment brush. Uh, and we're first going to work on this area here. So I'm going to brush in here along the wall because I want to brighten that up. But right now, I'm just going to zero everything out. And I want to show the uh, mask overlay here. And uh, we will we'll just sort of brush in into the shadow area where I want to bring out some detail. And um, I can make the brush a little bit smaller here. And as I'm as I'm working my way up here, I'll probably want to zoom in just to get a little more detail. But I want to make sure I have a fairly soft edge. So uh, I'm leaving the brush in its sort of softest setting. I want to just kind of go along here. Uh, it's the side of the wall that I'm primarily interested in. And so I want to make sure by showing the mask overlay here, I can uh, make sure that I'm covering up all the areas that I want to ultimately brighten uh, using the sliders over here. I haven't done anything yet, but uh, I'm working in uh, this 
mask here. And uh, well, maybe we'll go as far as that. Okay, now I'm going to back out because I want to view this in context. I'm going to uncheck the show selected mask overlay. And now when I, I come into the sliders here, I can kind of see the effect that I'm going for. Maybe, you know, we'll open up the shadows here. Uh, and give it just a little more exposure, just just enough so that there's some detail there. And now what we have is fairly flat. I, I am going to want to bring uh, some emphasis onto these figures, and for that I think I'll use the uh, the new radial filter here, um, and we will uh, invert the mask because I'm going to want to uh, brighten them up. But first, let's kind of get the area that I want to brighten up identified here. So this circle, I'm going, to, I'm going to want to brighten this area up. So I have the show edit pins on auto. And what this does is when I move the cursor outside of the image over to the sliders, it, the, the control points disappear. So now I can kind of see the nature of the effect. So maybe I'll open up the shadows here again as much as I can and give it just, you know, bump that exposure just a little bit, just enough. So it looks like maybe the wall behind them is a little bit brighter, but the uh, you don't notice that there's any kind of mask or, or anything isolating that figures. But it does help bring your eye to the figures to have just a little more contrast and a little more detail in the shadow there. Okay, so now I'm pretty ready uh, to bring this into Photoshop. I can always use my history here uh, to go back and forth and, and, and decide, uh, you know, if, I, if that was too much, I can just sort of toggle back and forth and see. Uh, but at this point, perhaps I'll make a snapshot of the state of the image right now in case I change my mind later and then I decide, no, I want to go back to that. Uh, this snapshot is, is a, a little more uh, persistent than the history. Um, and it also allows me to skip a bunch of steps to arrive at the, you know, the place that I want to be. And I could give it a name, but I'll go ahead and just keep the default time here. We'll create that snapshot. Uh, so now later on, if I change anything, I can always come back. You know, if I come back here and I'm trying to remember where was it that I liked this image? Oh yeah, it's this. It's this snapshot. Okay. So now I'm ready uh, to bring this into Photoshop. And that's going to be under the Photo Edit In section here. So we'll go Photo Edit In. And here's, here's a little tip. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this as a smart object. Not necessarily because I think I might want to change the, uh, the Lightroom settings uh, in the object while it's in Photoshop. But it delays the saving of this file. So when I open it as a smart object, uh, it's not going to immediately make a copy and put it into the Lightroom library. And that allows me some control over where I save uh, this uh, uh, work in progress file. So I'm going to open as a smart object, and it will go into Photoshop here. And here it is. Here's the file in Photoshop. You can see it's a smart object because it has that little badge. Um, and now, now the real exploration of this uh, uh, starts. Um, like I said, I try not to do too much. I didn't use any clarity slider settings because uh, after the this ten channel workflow, the the image can get a little uh, kind of grunge HDR looking if if you if you take it too far in Lightroom first. So we're going to look at the channels. And uh, we go to the individual channels here. I'll just click on the, the, the red channel thumbnail here. And I can see that's what the red channel looks like. And the, the, the sky has some good detail there. There's the green channel. Uh, so the sky doesn't look quite as good. And the blue channel, of course, has the worst sky and the darkest buildings. So I think you know what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to use the, the red channel as the basis of our first uh, luminosity move here. So. I'm going to go back to the RGB, go back to my layers, uh, and I'm going to make an empty layer. This is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to make an empty layer, 
and I'm going to go ahead and label this now. I'm going to put the red channel in this layer. So there's a little trick to doing that. And uh, that's up here in the image, apply image area. So I'm going to apply image to this empty layer. And my source, of course, is the only document that's open is this uh, document. Um, it doesn't really matter here, merged or whatever. I'm just going to pick the red channel because I haven't done anything yet. It also doesn't matter what the blending mode is here because uh, I'm just going to replace the empty layer with the contents of the red channel. And, and it's in grayscale, you can see here. So we'll put that in there. Now we have the red channel on top of the color image. And if we change the apply mode from normal to luminosity, we can see now that the red channel has lighter buildings which is helping us because you know it's opening up the shadows a bit there and um, a darker sky now I'm looking at this this wall here and it actually was lighter before I applied the red channel because there's there's a fair amount of green in this wall there's some green in here and I'd really like that to be uh, lighter as well um, I like what's happening you know, in terms of the shadow side of the building, so it's opening up quite a bit and the sky is getting a little bit darker. So that's bringing the range closer together. Um, but I, I'd like to get this area lightened back up again. So that is primarily, if we look closely in the channels, that's primarily in the green channel. Here's the red channel. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit so we can look at this. There's the red channel. There's the green channel. So you can see there's more separation and detail in there. And the blue channel, uh, just it's there's separation, but it's darker overall. So I, I want to open that area up a little bit more. So I'm going to use the, the green channel. So I come back in here and I've turned off the red luminosity because that's already making things, you know, it's, it's blending these two tones together. So I'm going to leave that turned off. I'll make another empty layer here. This is going to be for our green channel. And we'll do our little trick with the image, apply image. So I get my apply image, and this time I'm going to get the green channel. Now you'll also notice very, that I've turned off the red channel luminosity, so I'm really getting back to the original image to get that original green channel. And I'm putting it into the empty layer here. So now that's the green channel. Now what I want to do is make this green channel lighten the red channel. Okay, so here's my red channel luminosity. I'd actually like to get this green channel to affect the red channel before the this layer is applied in luminosity mode. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is to create a clipping group between the green and the red. So I'm going to apply the green to the red before it is applied to the color image. So we, the shortcut to creating that clipping group is to hold down the Option or Alt key when you move the cursor in between these two layers. So you can see how that, that icon changes. And now when I click, it forces this green layer to be applied to the red layer. And what I'm going to want to do here, let's just illustrate how I'm going to change this back to normal so you can see what's going on. So if I turn on the green layer, here's the red channel luminosity. If you turn on the green layer, you see it's all darker, except in this area in here. It's actually a little lighter. So if I take that green layer, instead of applying it in normal mode, I apply it in light mode. Now you can see it's lightening up some of the details here in the, in the water. And it is ever so slightly lightening up that that detail area in the in the wall ever so slightly. Now perhaps perhaps I don't actually it seems like it it's lightning maybe I'm losing some detail in the water here so perhaps I'll mask off that area so I'm going to make a layer mask here and we'll just use a, a fairly soft brush in here because I don't I don't want to see any lines, but I'll just mask it off. 
bring back some of that richness. And, the, and I don't mind if this foreground water goes darker because it's going to be probably using a vignette anyway in the image. And I'll let this get a little bit light, lighter there. And now perhaps, perhaps I can, I can force this area to be even lighter if I, if I now put a curve on top of this green channel. So let's, let's try that. I'll, I'll make a curve adjustment layer and I'll make sure the curve is also clipped so that it's again affecting this. And I, I'm going to ignore what it might be doing to the rest of the image. Well, maybe not. Maybe we'll zoom out and we'll look at that. I just want to can see how the mountain range here sort of ends right here. I'm going to move this end, the end point of the curve. I'm going to brighten it up overall and increase the contrast quite a bit. To right where that end point is. And I, I, I'm going to ignore what, what's happening to the rest of the image. And really, I'm just looking at increasing the, the, the contrast there. So make sure that this area now is, is brighter and has more contrast. And now I'm going to invert that layer mask because I don't want to do all this to the rest of the to this luminosity channel. I just want to brighten up this area. So we'll invert the curve. So now it has a black layer mask. And I can paint with white now where I want that brightening and extra contrast to happen. So I'm going to just put it in here just a bit. Okay, you know, maybe this area in here could use it just a little bit. So you can see by that that extra contrast now is being locally applied, and um, I'll take out some of that extra brightness there. So that's working on the the green added contrast and brightening up this area just a bit. Okay, so. Again, I'm kind of going for maximum detail here. Now let's turn on the red channel luminosity and see if that's uh, helping me or hurting me. So it's helping, but maybe it's a bit too much. So now we'll reduce the, the opacity of that just a little bit. Okay, and you can kind of see what that's what the what's happening with the green I don't like what it's doing in the sky up here so I'm going to go ahead and mask all that area off in that green light so masking it all off to get that rich blue sky back okay so now we're 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 getting there and uh, and at this point I've kind of got a, a basic uh, sort of tonal contrast thing worked out. I could uh, possibly apply a curve here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to wait, and, and I'll be using a curve at the end anyway as a final fine tuning. But at this point, I'm going to make a duplicate of this RGB document and convert it into LAB. So I'll come up here, Image, Duplicate duplicate and uh, we're going to duplicate it as uh, we'll, we'll, we'll name it because we're going to make it an LAB copy just so that we are not confused and I, I just want a flat I just want all these layers flat because I'm just going to convert it into LAB so I, I check duplicate merged layers only and here we are and we go up here to image mode LAB so now I have an LAB version and an RGB version with the layers. Now this LAB version, uh, we start by looking at the channels. So there, there's the lightness channel. And the thing about LAB that's most interesting are the A and the B channels. So you can kind of see uh, that, especially in the B channel, most of the buildings are lighter and the sky is darker. Uh, and we're going to end up taking advantage of that a little bit later but right now let's really work on amping the color up 
Uh, so one of the things that I do is I'll, I'll put a curve up here and before I actually start playing around with the curve I'll just change the apply mode from normal to overlay and that really enhances the contrast and uh, the saturation I'm not so interested in the L channel contrast so I'm actually going to blend that out so I'm going to come into the empty area here or you could use the flyaway menu and go to blending options uh, so we can go to blending options and get the blending options or we can just double click in the empty area of the layer here and we'll get the blending options. What we're interested in here is which channels we're blending. So if we uncheck the L, uh, the added contrast in the lightness channel goes away and we're left only with added contrast in um, the color channels. And so right now I'm looking to see is, is this enough color? Um, do I want even more contrast here? Do I want to emphasize the green a little bit more? Um, and now I can come back to the curve. It's, it really started off as fairly desaturated. Now I'm really, I'm thinking actually the warm colors in here are, are pretty nice. You might like to get maybe a little more green in it. So in that case, I go to the A channel. Now the, the green color is in the lower part of the curve. So I can kind of get more green into the image by increasing the, the sharpness uh, of the steepness of the curve in the lower part of this curve. Now I don't want that green cast coming into the highlights so much or the areas that would be redder. So I'm gonna bring this back I'll put a little point here so that I kind of push that point through the middle of the curve a bit. And let's see if I can, looking in this area, just getting a little more color, a little more green color in there. And uh, it's keeping this area, if we look in the curve, see that this color is just above uh, the middle there. So if I, if I click here and place a point there, I can kind of, desaturate that point just a little bit with a little bit of a move there like that. But I do want to keep this, this green saturation uh, working its way in there. Okay, so now I've got a pretty nice color in the, in the blue sky. It's pretty rich up here. Uh, I don't think I need any more blue. And I don't think I need any more, any more color, actually. This is looking pretty good. So uh, here's a, another part of the 10 channel workflow I'm going to select both these layers okay and I'm going to convert this into a smart object so I'll go over here under the uh, the layer options fly away and right here is convert to smart object so now that kind of makes it into one thing it's sort of a container that holds both of those layers and that allows me to take this and drag it into the RGB document. So I'm going to go ahead, click and drag up here, and drop it on top. Now you see how it came inside of my clipping group here, so that's one of the things you have to look out for. So I want to make sure it, it goes up on top, and I want to unclip it. So I'm going to click again with the Alt or Option key, and now it's on top. And now I'll change this over to color because that allows me to change the contrast underneath the image if I want. So I can I can modify anything underneath the image and still preserve this added color that I've got. Uh, okay, now we're not quite done. Now that I brought the color in, I, I, I'm going to look at these sort of contrast enhanced uh, channels and let's look at the B channel again. Remember how I told you uh, we're going to take advantage of this B channel. What we see here is that the warmer yellower areas are lighter. The blue areas are darker and they're, anything darker than middle gray is more blue and anything lighter than middle gray is more yellow and we have an interesting uh, shape, tonal shape in this channel. So we're going to take advantage of that by creating another layer here. 
And sometimes it looks good to put the layer above the color layer, and sometimes it works better if we place it below. But we're going to start by making that empty layer, and this is going to hold our, um, our B channel blend. Um, okay, so first let's just get that B channel in there. So I go to my little friend here, the image, apply image. And we're going to look for that second document, the LAB document. So both documents are identical in their pixel dimensions, and so they show up here in the apply image. And we're going to get the B channel. And we're just going to put it in there. And then the blend mode we're going to use here is overlay. So what you can see is it's darkening the sky even more, and it's brightening up our warmer colors even more. And uh, I'm looking at this and looking at this area down in here, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if the lighter blue area might actually be a little bit nicer. Uh, and then we'll double check. Sometimes it, it, sometimes when you have this overlay blend up above the color, it increases the saturation too much. So let's just double check, see if it looks better underneath it. And I'm actually enjoying a little, there's a little more uh, color saturation in this green area when it's above the color. You can kind of see that change there. Uh, you may not be able to see that in the video, but I see it. And so I think I'm going to leave it above, although, well, I, I still think it's better just above the above the color layer. And little things that are already saturated will tend to get a little more saturated if we do the overlay above the color. So these sort of areas, but they're very small, so I'm not, I'm not actually too worried about it getting too saturated looking. Um, Okay, so that's already done some very interesting things, and now I, you know, maybe uh, maybe I'll take it a little bit out of the the water here. I could put a layer mask here, and uh, you know, just sort of blend it out. Just kind of make sure there's a, a little blue light happening in that area. Um, but I do like the way the sky's got nice and dramatic, and uh, we're getting even more life in into the uh, the warmer buildings. So this is really starting to look pretty good to me now. And now uh, I'm ready to just do a final curve on top just to set the black point and the white point and make sure I'm hitting the maximum range here. So I'll use my little threshold trick to find the lightest and darkest points in the image. So I'll put this threshold adjustment on top of everything. And the threshold turns everything into black and white. So to find the darkest point in the image, I'll move the slider to the left. And the last thing that winks out is the darkest tone. So, and you have to kind of decide where is the most significant darkest tone, because we're going to set this uh, to be a level of 15, 15, 15. And that sort of ensures that we're not losing detail. Now, some shadows, I don't care. If they go to, I don't really care if this goes to, you know, black with no detail or some of these areas down here in the water, but I do care about the figure. And so I want to make sure that this is the area that I set for my black point. And I'm going to get the color sampler tool here and click right there where that dark shadow is. And uh, we'll come back out. And now we're going to find the lightest point, which I suspect might be up there in the clouds. I'm not really sure. But if I move to the right, you'll see the last thing that winks out will be the brightest thing in the image. And pretty sh sure enough, it's, it's that highlight on the clouds that I was kind of concerned with. So I'm going to zoom in here and we'll place my white point sample right there. Just look, see how that winks out. Yeah, I pretty much nailed it. And uh, now we can throw away this threshold adjustment, because I've only used that to find the, the lightest and darkest point. And as it turns out, in this particular image, I think we have a, a pretty good white point there. That that cloud, I, 
I wouldn't mind if that cloud is white, and I certainly wouldn't mind if this point is the darkest point that will reproduce in a print. So right now I see 444, a nice neutral black point, but it's too low. And my white point is also a little suppressed, and it's not it's not terribly neutral. So I can, I can neutralize that and uh, elevate the black point. And so I'm going to get a curve. And since my black point's already neutral, all I need to do is take the RGB composite curve and just move it up until that says 15. Uh, sometimes it's worth doing a test to see if your printer will differentiate tones below 15. Uh, I have some papers and with the Epson printers I can get it down to about 10. But in most cases I think 15 is a very safe area. That means uh, that anything darker than a level of 15 will print the same shade of black. So I just want to make sure that I'm not losing any possible uh, detail like in this gentleman's black jacket here so or you know maybe the black shutters if I if I left this way down at four uh, a lot of this detail would just plug up and it would just uh, you know I'd lose uh, uh, valuable information okay so now I'm going to set the white point and it looks like the brightest channel is the red channel but we can get that up to 245 and that's a good value for detail in the highlight so I'm moving the composite curve over until the red says 245. And now I'll just go through the other channels and get them up there. And I can just use the arrow keys. I'm watching the green channel now. I'm just going to move that point to the left until it says 245. And uh, let's do the same thing with the blue here. And we'll kind of nudge that over first to get it close and then get it up to 245. Okay, so that's that's kind of you know uh, cooled off the image because we made a, a fair uh, a fairly strong move here in the blue channel. I'm still okay with my uh, my black point, but I'm I'm I've lost some warmth in here. So I'm going to go ahead and find you know where on the blue channel this uh, this color is, and I'm going to bring that back down and and just to kind of take out a little blue out of the the color of the wall here, and I think I think I'm I'm right there. Okay, so there's my my final adjustment, and now the only thing I might also want to do is just try to decide if I want to do any sharpening. Uh, uh, and I would I would do the sharpening underneath the curve. I just did that to kind of see if that's the kind of brightness level that I want. If I want to enhance the contrast a little bit more, I've set my white point and black point, but let's just say I want to get a little more contrast through the midtone here. I can just put a very slight kind of S curve shape here. Right? And I, you know, double check that I'm not going over 245 there in my highlights. So I'll just bring that back down. Uh, it looks like I have to come back up on my blue channel here to get 245. Uh, so yeah, something like that. Now I've, I've got as much contrast as I think I can tolerate here. Uh, and now I'll think about sharpening. So sharpening I will I'll do underneath the curve. And uh, there's usually two, two levels of sharpening that, that I'll apply. And I always look at uh, the image at 50% luminosity. You can see down here it's showing my zoom view. So I want to get uh, some in detail enhancement in here. And um, I don't think I actually need to do uh, to get more what I call 3D shape because there's a lot of fine detail in here. So I think all we really need is a little more unsharp mask. And I'll show you my uh, technique for applying unsharp mask in, in a controlled way. And uh, so we're going to we're going to create a composite layer that we're going to use for our sharpening. So hold down the option key and from the layers op options flyaway here, uh, I'm going to say uh, merge visible. But I have to keep that option or alt key held down so that I get a uh, a composite layer and this is going to be uh, the beginning of our uh, sharpen. So this layer I'm going to run unsharp mask on it. 
So I go down to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. And this is pretty simple. I, I use 500 as the amount. And then my radius, most of the time, is one pixel for this size files. Uh, sometimes I'll look at you know, adding a little bit more, but really one pixel, or maybe even a little less in this case. I am seeing nice sharpening in the bricks there. If I go a little less than that, well, actually, I probably can get away with this, this level of sharpening. So I want to make sure that I see that that sharpening in the bricks uh, and is one too much. Well, frankly, I'll leave it at one just so we can see it here. I think that that, that works fine. Now, this looks too sharp, right? Uh, but we're not done. I want to make sure that I, I'm, I can always back off on the opacity in that layer, but I want to make sure that I've got a good level of sharpening and I don't have halos that are super obvious. I'm actually going to control that in the next step because the obvious halos here are not the dark halos, but you can see it's the little light halos that are coming around the dark areas that you really see the most. So right after running that filter, I go up to the edit menu and we'll fade unsharp mask. Okay, so I'm not going to change the opacity, but I change the blend mode. So we're going to change the blend mode to luminosity, and that helps remove any color uh, from the halos. If you don't do this, you can introduce sort of additional color saturation in the halos, and that, that makes them stand out, you know, more. Um, let me zoom in and see if I can illustrate that in this area here. So if we don't change it to luminosity, you can kind of see a little more color in the halo, little bits of yellow and blue showing up in there, but the luminosity move takes takes all that out. Um, okay, getting back to my 50% view here. So now I'm, I just say okay. Now I have it, you know, 100% or a 500% sharpened layer. It's too sharp. Uh, but here's the process. We're going to duplicate that. So now I've got two copies. This top copy I'm going to place in light mode. And I'll change the label to light. The bottom copy I'm going to put in darken mode. So I'll change the label and change the apply to darken. Now here's the trick. We usually can get away with much less lightening halo. So I, I select that lighten layer, and I'm going to reduce the opacity. I usually start at about 60%. And you can see without the lightning halos, it's just the darkening halos. And it, it looks, you know, maybe a little heavy, like the little dark lines are a little heavy. So you need a little bit of that lightning in there just to bring back some of the lighter details and balance off, you know, balance against the dark. Uh, and I, you know, sometimes I'll go as low as 50%, depends on the type of image here. And now we'll select both of those layers together, highlight both of them by shift clicking. And I'm going to place them into a group. So I go, go to my layer options here and I say new group from layers. Now this is going to be my sharpened group. Okay. So now, with all of that, I look at this and decide, can I reduce the opacity here just a little bit? I usually don't, if I'm going to make a big print, I usually don't like the sharpening to be too aggressive. So I'll reduce the opacity there, and that's looking pretty good. Okay, now, we'll go ahead and put the curve on top again, bring the uh, the brightness back up. <clears throat> and now uh, I'm thinking that really I don't necessarily want all this area way back here to be so sharp, and I certainly don't want these halos against the sky to show up. In fact, all of this area back in here doesn't need to have, it's sort of exposed, right? So I can see that uh, there are little halos across the edges here, and that's sort of a telltale sign of the uh, uh, 
of the sharpening effect. Whereas in the areas in here, you can't, you're not really aware of halos, and it can have fairly strong sharpening, and it looks pretty natural. Uh, but against back in here, against those edges, it doesn't look nice. So, you know, one of the easiest things to do is simply mask it off. So I've got this group which has both of these layers in it. I'm going to put a layer mask on it, and um, we'll just we'll just probably what I should do is just select that sky because I don't need to sharpen the clouds, and I'll go back down to the background layer here and use the quick select tool to just select the sky out okay and I'm gonna expand the selection to go just over the edge so we'll, we'll uh, modify the selection under the select menu here select modify expand and uh, you know we'll do like five pixels I think and they'll come you can see uh, that selection comes just inside of the area that has the halo. Okay, so I have a, a layer mask here, and I've selected the area that I don't I don't want to sharpen. So I've got my layer mask here. I'll put black in the background, so that when I hit the delete key, I will delete out and mask that area off. So you can see now, um, if I option click on that layer mask, you can see where the, the mask is. So in essence, what I've done is I've taken out the, the sharpening along that edge so that it's not now not so obvious that I've got sharpening against the sky. And then I'll let this area back here be, be softer as well, and I can just mask that out with uh, a black brush uh, because I think back in here I don't want to draw the eye to too much detail back there and it's, it's a little it's more natural if that falls off in the focus uh, you know and I can sort of mask it out so now my mask looks like this again very softly edged so you're not really aware of it and it just keeps the the sharpness in the area of interest, which is in this foreground area. Okay, so that that's pretty much uh, it at the moment. But uh, what you can see uh, by having um, all these layers is I can come around and, and I can alter the curve at the on the top. I can I can change my uh, the uh, opacity of some of these blends, and, and I can I can really fine-tune the image after I see maybe a test print. I can decide if I want to add a little more uh, brightness or something in a certain area. I still can certainly come in with uh, more curves and layer masks and, and fine-tune things. Now at this point, after I've finished, it's still kind of opened up as a smart object and Lightroom is waiting to see what I'm going to do. At this point, I would uh, save as so that I can decide where to save it and I usually would pick you know my uh, uh, work in progress here I'm gonna say uh, you know this is uh, we're gonna call this smart ed smart object and we'll call it edit and we'll save it okay so that's, that's it for, it seems like a convoluted workflow, but uh, I think you'll agree that we get, we get a lot more quality and a lot more control than we could have uh, achieved using Lightroom. So thank you very much. So to review the process that allowed us to arrive at this result, we start off uh, by ensuring that we have as much detail everywhere in the raw processor without trying to push too much color contrast into the image. We we'll fix any noise issues in the raw process as much as possible without destroying too much image detail. Uh, I didn't go over this, but um, we want to fix the noise early, and so that means fixing it in the raw processor like uh, Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom because the 10 channel process often exaggerates noise so minimizing it early is ideal. 
we look at the individual RGB channels for the best tonal separation and contrast and take advantage of that, sometimes combining channels to optimize um, using layer masks and blending modes. We blend the channel, the grayscale rendering that results from this channel exploration into the color uh, using luminosity. We duplicate the document and convert to LAB to perform some color enhancement operations, mostly by increasing the contrast in the A and B channels. And we look to the A and B channels for potential blending moves back in the RGB. In, the, in this case, we used the B channel and brought it back into, uh, uh, into the document and uh, applied it in overlay mode. And finally, we fine tune the contrast with a final curves adjustment layer. And often this is only necessary for the black and white points uh, to establish maximum range in the image. Thank you for watching. You can find out more information about the 10-channel workflow as, many, as well as many other Photoshop and photography techniques on my website and my online courses. There are also many free tutorials on my YouTube channel. Thank you again.